Welcome to the Airgun Show. This week we've got the Crossman MTR 77 NP Gas Ram Airgun on test, plus a roundup of guns and gear from the British shooting show at Stoneleigh. But first, I'm back out on my woodland pest control rounds and hitting the squirrels hide. <laughs> Right, I'm back out in the woods where I've been helping out with the squirrel control. And that's because the bushy tails have not only been impacting on timber management by gnawing the trees, but they're also having an impact on the native wildlife here. And I'm pleased to say that to date, I've managed to account for more with the air rifle than the owner has with his traps. Now, to be fair, I'm in quite a privileged position here because the owner sets up feeders so I know exactly where to target the squirrels when I come. The only problem is that this place isn't very close to where I live, so I don't get to shoot it as frequently as I'd like. So what I tend to do is come here for brief campaigns in which over a couple of weeks, I'll try and have five or six sessions back to back and give those squirrels a real clobbering and then lay off for a few months before I come back. Now this time round, I've already had one short session and managed to account for two squirrels, but to be honest, there hadn't been grain in the feeders for very long. Back again today, the feeders have been up and running for well over a week, so I'm fairly confident they're going to be getting a lot more interest from those squirrels, which should in turn give us more action. So let's give it a go and see what happens. It's very wet and boggy underfoot, but we did actually have a frost last night and I can see there's still some grain frost lingering in the woods under the trees. And that's good news because feeders tend to be much more attractive to squirrels after harsh weather. If those squirrels are just emerging now after a long, cold night, they should have a real edge on their hunger, which will make them much more eager to get out and tuck into that grain. Right, you'll see I've actually left my hide in position from last time. Over the last couple of years, the squirrels here have seen a lot of shooting pressure and the remaining ones are now getting pretty wary. So I do prefer to shoot from behind a screen if I can. Now leaving it in position means that obviously I can get set up fairly quickly and without making too much disturbance, but also it's given the squirrels a couple of days to get accustomed to it. It is a very basic hide though. I've simply got a camo net on a couple of poles I have pegged it to the ground with sticks to stop it from flapping in the wind and also I've tried to incorporate it into any surrounding vegetation just to help it blend in a bit. There isn't much of a backdrop behind me and to be honest with you I'd be worried about that if I was targeting something like crows, magpies, pigeons but squirrels aren't that sharp eyed so this should be sufficient for what we need.
That's got us off the mark. Looked for a moment there, like that one was actually going to expire in the feed tray, but it flipped off in the end, but not before kicking a load of grain onto the ground. And I hope no squirrels come out and settle on that because I won't be able to see them amongst the undergrowth. Still, that's one in the bag, so we're up and running now. Well, we didn't have to wait very long for that one. And it looked like being another one that might have ended up in the feed tray. Although again, it rolled off in the end. Now, that one before I took the shot was absolutely stuffing its face. Really does prove the appeal of these grain feeders when you pick a cold day. That one was absolutely rasping away. I'm not sure whether it was agitated because it had cottoned onto us being here or because it had noticed those dead squirrels below. Either way, it kept it nice and still for me to take the shot and it's another one in the bag. There's a squirrel out now on a distant branch. It's probably a good 60 meters away, so I'm not gonna chance taking the shot now. Hopefully it's got a taste for that grain and we'll come down onto the feeder, or at least come a bit closer and out onto a branch where I can get a clear shot at it. That one that was up in the distant treetop. Moved through, came a bit closer, comfortably within range then. Well worth waiting for, it's in the bag.
now we really have got one stuck in the feeder. The thing is I'm reluctant to break cover now because the squirrels really are coming thick and fast. So I'm going to just leave it there. Quite frankly, if any others turn up, it'll be interesting to see how they react to it. I could have taken that shot a bit more quickly and for a moment there I was worried I'd missed my chance as it started to climb back up but I managed to get a shot in there. Now I actually lingered for a couple of reasons. Firstly I just wanted to be happy with the shot but also I wanted to see how it responded to having that dead one in the feed tray and the verdict was it really didn't seem to be too bothered. Those squirrels just seemed desperate to get to that grain this morning. I managed to get on that one but I'm not sure whether Kev who's doing the honours on the camera today did because it was partially obscured. So I hope there's something for you to see. But pest control has to come first. I could get a clear shot so I went ahead and took it. Unfortunately Kev has to get away now so we're going to make that the last one. But we've had a brilliant morning and made a really good dent in the squirrel population here. However. I still reckon there are plenty more to be had, so I'm looking forward to coming back for another crack at them another day. A great session keeping the squirrels in check there. And now it's the Airgun Show News. This is the Airgun Show News. Brought to you by the Egan Center. And reporting from the Great British Shooting Show. Visitors to the show at Stoney were treated with a dazzling showcase of new air guns and gear. One of the biggest head turners of the three day show was the brand new Galahad Sport Pub from Air Arms. At the show, we're getting great interest in this new rifle from Air Arms. It's the first ballpark we've done, and to be honest, we're so proud of it. The super compact multi shot PCP's features include an adjustable ambidextrous stock and a neat forward mounted cocking lever, which can be reversed for left handers. Another new shorty to draw the crowds was the FX Impact on the ASI stand. The regulated multi-shot PCP boasts a massive shot count and a slick retractable silencer. Priced at £1,600, it's due to be in shops this April. The bottle has a pressure gauge so you know how much air you've got there. Turn it over here, you can see your regulated pressure for the regulator itself. This end, we have an extendable sound moderator. So you can have it pushed right back in without any moderation but close up, tight use. If you've got a little more space, you can pull that out 
and I've got an almost completely silent air gun. Bullpup was certainly the dominant theme at this year's show, and Daystate's new Renegade grabbed its share of the limelight. Looking a lot like its Pulsar stablemate, the Renegade combines a mechanical firing action with an electronic trigger. You have the hybrid trigger unit built into this. The hardest thing to get right on a Bullpup is the trigger linkage, so we implemented the HTU trigger, which is the, the hybrid trigger unit. Available in green and black synthetic stock options, it's set to hit the shops in June. It wasn't just about the small guns, though. BSA have made a bigger version of their diminutive Ultra. The new Ultra XL, due for release this summer, boasts more shots per fill and a sumptuous stock with adjustable cheek piece. Visitors were queuing up to get a look at the new Virac HW110 on the whole cartridge stand. Based on the super successful HW100, this 10-shot PCP is lighter and more affordable at just £645. It has um, a stainless steel air cartridge, which is integral. It's got quick fill facility. It has the high-efficiency Virac silencer. The stock is ambidextrous, and it is a beach stock covered with a soft-touch finish. The Sure Shot team was showing off the brand new Black Mamba range of airguns from Aeron. The regulated PCPs are made in the Czech Republic and come in basic, FT, HFT and bench variants, with prices starting at £850. The air is fed through the probe here so you can actually change the barrels uh, very, very simply. Fully adjustable trigger. The Crow Puncher was one of the big draws on the shooting party stand. The magazine-fed PCP features distinctive gold trim and, unusually, is available with open sights. It's a steal at £580 with two magazines, scope, mounts, silencer, gun bag and pellets. Sports Guns unveiled the Walter LGU Custom, one of the first air guns from the Armex Custom House. Based on the acclaimed 12-foot pound underlever action, this edition features an eye-catching carbon effect stock and is expected to cost around £400. There were plenty of top optics on show on the Highland Outdoor stand, including the brand new Diamond LIR long range scopes from Nico Sterling. This high quality telescopic sight features side parallax adjustment from 10 yards to infinity, illuminated reticle, and tactical turrets. Fans of night vision were eager to get a look at the new Pulsar Phantom on the Scott Country stand. The super crisp white phosphor NV unit is shockproof, has a red or green illuminated reticle and a detection range of up to 700 meters. It's a Gen 2 Plus white phosphor scope, uh, which has a 700 meter detection range in ideal conditions. Uh, the white phosphor gives you a super clean, crisp image with increased depth of field. Um, you've got an integrated IR illuminator, just this tiny illuminator here, uh, with a weaver bolt, uh, weaver rail to add on to any rifle. It's ideal for air rifles right the way through to sentence fire, um, and its usable range is up to 300 metres. We'll be back at Stoney in just five short months for the UK Game Fair on the 22nd to the 24th of July. That was the Egan Show News. I haven't got a machine gun on the bench this week, it's the MTR 77 NP from Crossman, distributed in the UK by ASI. Although this kind of military style airgun may not be quite so popular with the traditionalists among us, they've proven to be a massive hit with younger shooters over recent years. Let's start by taking a look at the synthetic stock, which is certainly the standout feature on this airgun. Apart from being very eye-catching, it's also surprisingly comfortable. The wide round forend sits very nicely in the hand and the ribs that run around its circumference make for a really secure grip. The drop-down pistol grip is also very well proportioned and ensures that your finger finds its way instinctively to the trigger. There's no pronounced rise to the cheek piece, but it's still quite high enough to ensure proper alignment between your eye and the scope. The only change I might want to see is a bit more drop on that flat plastic butt pad just to get it to nestle a little bit lower in the shoulder. If you push down the button on the right hand side of the action, the imitation magazine can be removed. Slide open the lid on the top and there is some storage space in there, which I suppose you could use to carry small items of kit. This Crossman also comes fitted with sling attachments, which is a really nice touch. 
The finish of the gun doesn't leave too much metal exposed to the elements. There's an anti-glare finish on the barrel, which combined with the collar around the end of the muzzle, provides a really good grip when you're cocking the gun. There's also a short accessory rail on the barrel, and the scope rails provide a really secure fixing for the supplied optics. That scope is a 4x32 model from Centerpoint. Optical quality is pretty good and it's well suited to the proportions of the gun. This Crossman also comes supplied with a set of mounts, so all you need is a tin of pellets and you're ready for the range. The MTR 77 weighs less than 3.5 kilos with the scope fitted and measures just over 100 centimetres from end to end. Those dimensions mean it's a substantially sized air gun, but it certainly isn't heavy and should be comfortable for most people to shoot, even adult shooters of smaller stature and young teens starting out in the world of air gun shooting. Apart from being comfortable to hold, this air gun is also very smooth to cock, especially when you consider that its nitro piston power plant is producing power close to the 12 foot pound UK legal limit. You load up via the cutaway in the top of the fore end housing. The breech actually travels past the gap on the cocking stroke, so you have to push the barrel back just a little bit to line it up. Once you've loaded up, you return the barrel all the way home where it locks up very positively. I really like the shape of the plastic trigger blade, which is gently curved and has a relatively wide, flat face. The first stage is quite short and there is some creep in the second stage. Nonetheless, trigger weight is more or less perfect and I found it easy enough to predict after a few practice shots. The manual safety catch is located just in front of the trigger blade too close to the trigger for my liking. Still, there's no denying that it's easy to reach and it does what it's supposed to do. You pull it back to make the gun safe and then push it forwards when you're ready to shoot. So, inside that machine gun shell, you've actually got a pretty well appointed gas ram air gun. Let's do some shooting and see how it performs. Well, it's certainly good fun to shoot. I really can't overemphasize just how smooth that cocking stroke is. Also, the nitro piston firing cycle feels very fast and there is very little felt recoil. Now, you can probably see that we've picked quite a breezy day today. Nonetheless, we left the target out at 25 meters and the 177 caliber test gun has just turned out a five shot group that I reckon probably falls within about an inch. Now, given the conditions, and the fact that this is a recoiling air gun, I reckon that's pretty respectable. So apart from being a really fun plinking gun, it's also got the kind of accuracy that you're going to need for close to mid-range hunting. As I said at the outset, air guns with this kind of tactical styling may not be to everybody's liking, but if they help to get youngsters away from their video games and out onto the shooting range, then that has to be a good thing. And there's much more to this Crossman than its looks. Its £249 price tag buys you a fuss-free brake barrel with that nitro piston gas ram power plant. And when you take into account that you also get that centre point scope and mounts, it really is a very impressive package. That's all for this week, but we'll be back again in a fortnight. Thanks for watching and please don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you aren't already a member of the BASC, have a look at their website and check out the benefits you could be taking advantage of through Airgun Membership.